Cache is used not only as a tool for boosting your query performance, properly used it will also save you some money. In this video I will explain the caching mechanism in Snowflake with real examples. You will learn how and when you can use them. So if you are looking for better understanding of query optimization concepts, want to save a little money or preparing for the Snowpro Core certification, then this video is definitely for you. Stay tuned! There are three different cache types in Snowflake. Each of them serves a different purpose. What is my purpose? Some parts you can control to get even better results, while some of them happen behind the scenes, which you cannot control, but you can take advantage of. First of all, we can distinguish the virtual warehouse cache. It is also known as the main cache, compute cache or local disk cache. It doesn't really matter, but don't be surprised if you find these names in some articles. Basically, when queries are run, Snowflake uses the computer resources of virtual warehouses to perform these operations. If subsequent queries can be served by the data in the warehouses cache, they will be executed faster because they avoid accessing data storage. So for example, let's say we want to get the customers in a particular year range. In the first query, we'll take the 10 years range. As you can see, there is no data scanned from cache. In the second one, we will take next 10 years range. So in theory, these rows are not overlapping, but in practice, we already went through scanning the same micro partitions. So most of the data has already been loaded into a cache. Anyway, it's a Snowflake sample dataset, so you can also check it on your own. Each virtual warehouse has its own cache, which means it's not going to work if you run this query on a different warehouses. Let's check it out too, just to make sure. If we, if we run the same query on a different warehouse, as you can see, there is no data used from cache. This also won't work if we suspend our warehouse because if the virtual warehouse is suspended, the cache is lost. I mean, it's purged. By the way, it's the only way to remove cache from a warehouse. I know it can be challenging to find a balance between suspending the warehouse too early to serve safe credits and keep it in long enough to save the cache. Every case is slightly different, so you need to monitor your usage and then decide when to turn it off. I mean the virtual warehouse, of course. And if costs are still too high and you need something more, then you can check out my previous video about cost optimization techniques. This cache is particularly effective during sessions where multiple queries access the same data sets, exactly when using fact tables in a typical Snowflake schema. What a name coincidence. Well. Keep in mind, the warehouse cache is shared among users, so to use it in the most efficient way, you can split the warehouses based on user groups like developers, analysts and managements, for example, because it's most likely they will use different data sets. Another way would be to split based on the environment, smaller warehouses for development and larger ones for production and testing. It's also worth mentioning that the larger the warehouse, the more cash it can store. Let's say you're running a query that takes 5 minutes to process. After a while, your friend runs exactly the same query. It could be a dashboard, for example. But this time it takes less than 1 second. Why? Because Query results are cached for 24 hours and it's called, you won't guess, query result cache mechanism. So every time you run the same query, instead of executing it from the beginning, you will instantly receive the same results. However, the data cannot change since then. If they do, or if you are using functions like current timestamp, then this query would need to be calculated once again. But there are actually a lot of different conditions to meet to use the query result cache, so you better read the documentation carefully. This is kind of all or nothing mechanisms. You either use it or not. There is no partial benefit here like for the virtual warehouse cache. 
this type of cache is often used by dashboards where the same query is used multiple times. In case you want to turn it off for testing or other stuff you do, set the use cache result parameter to false. But doing so, don't forget about the virtual warehouse cache and that you need to also suspend the warehouse to purge this cache. For every table or micro partition to be precise, Snowflake stores some additional information. I mean metadata. This includes minimum and maximum value of a column, row count of a table, and number of distinct values of a column. So every query that uses this information gets kind of like a speed boost, let's say. For example, if you are looking for the max value of a product quantity or just the number of rows with a simple select count star, Snowflake will read it from metadata instead of reading data in all of these micropartitions. So, as you might now guess, this trick is possible due to the metadata cache. It's also worth mentioning this cache is stored on the cloud service layer and is available for every user, in contrast to the virtual warehouse cache, which is available only for that particular warehouse. It does not expire and it's updated with every insert, update or delete operation. You have no control over this cache, which is why I feel like this operation is a little bit forgotten. However, you can build your queries knowing that receiving, for example, the maximum value of a column is processed by metadata cache. So you can use it in a subquery or a separate CT, for example. And the best part is for metadata operations like getting a row count, you don't need a running warehouse. So to summarize, there are three cache types in Snowflake. Each of them works in a different way, but all aim to get your data faster and also cheaper as a result. I hope with this video I could help you understand this concept a little bit. So if you are interested in more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Ciao!